Hello and welcome to another mini epic. I was wondering recently, why can I not turn my alarm system off remotely, like if I'm away on holiday? And why can't the alarm system company do it for me? You know when you get that call, hello sir, your alarm's not on. Thank you for telling me, can you do it? No, you have to go to the premises and uh, turn it off. So, wouldn't it be amazing to take that alarm be able to switch it on and off remotely and use the sensors, the door sensors, the motion sensors for integration into my home to turn on the lights and make it epic. Well, there are in fact a couple of options. In South Africa, Olong, for example, connects with a lot of existing alarm systems. They provide a device, it costs between 1,000 and 2,000 Rand, uh, connects to your current alarm system, uh, then you will be granted access by an app to control your alarm system. The access costs about 650 rand a year. It's either charged directly or it's charged by your existing security company. There is also the Paradox option. You would have to purchase a IP150, it's a system as well that connects directly to your alarm system, then give you access to an app as well to control your alarm and see what your zones and what's going on with your alarm system at home. Uh, IDS, another popular alarm system in South Africa, has a hype system, also has an app, also requires a connection to the alarm directly. And uh, these, these solutions do exist. But can they, can we use the zones for other integrated automations? So you're talking about getting some response from the motion sensors and the door sensors. Well, at the moment, an alarm system is geared to look after your burglar, not look after you. Ah, oh, glory. I mean, we all love our assistant. Why not go open source? I mean, there is options. Our community from, from home assistant that is doing a lot of effort into alarm integration. Just off the top of my head, I'm thinking about the, uh, the paradox one. I know a lot of uh, clients already have Paradox uh, systems and there is a integration called Paradox Alarm Integration. There's also another which is a little bit more flexible in the sense of it will support most alarm systems called Connected. That's the one with the K. That's right, yeah. Yeah, the nice thing about Connected is it connects in parallel with your existing alarm system. You have the ability to basically integrate those zones into Home Assistant uh, albeit, I mean, there is some DIYing that you're going to have to do. So run down to the local electronics store and... Uh, You've got a local electronics store? And yeah, no, 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 not on no. Online? No, on the line. line. Okay. On the line, okay. Yeah, and put one of the modules together, get it going, and you have that integration that you're looking for. Well, um, that sounds like exactly what we want. Let's check it out. Okay, so what we're looking at is a traditional alarm panel here at the top and then we've got the alarm integration module sitting just below that. Might look a little bit different because I just put it in an enclosure to keep things neat. But um, what we're looking at is we've got our node MCU just at the top. We've got our relay module just below that and it might not be 100% uh, visible to you in the frame. But just below these wires we've got uh, the buck converter. As far as the cabling goes, um, at the top we've got our zone outputs. Uh, in my case, I've made use of uh, five of the zone. The five of the zones, the sixth one, I am dedicating to the relay. So I have the ability to obviously arm and disarm this alarm. Um, the way that I've wired it is just uh, D1 or zone one starts on the far left. So you can see in this case, uh, my D1 pin is connected to zone one. D2 to zone 2 and then obviously we've got 5, 6, 7 and then RX so um, for this alarm what I've done is the relay module is then connected to zone 5 and as mentioned uh, there's two cables to do that the one is your common and then my, in my case I've got it uh, connected to the normally open then finally we need to obviously power the, the alarm uh, integration module in this case I've got it connected uh, to the alarm panels uh, 12 volt auxiliary output that runs into the alarm 
integration module um, into the buck converter the buck converter is stepping that 12 volts down to the um, to the 5 volts that the, the node MCU uses and yeah that, that's pretty much it from the physical connectivity uh, to your alarm let's get on to the good stuff uh, as far as the home assistant integration goes okay guys so now we have completed the integration with our alarm panel what we want to do next is flash the node mcu with the custom firmware uh, as mentioned so uh, we've got some firmware called connected uh, that we'll be using essentially it comes with its own flashing tool and then there is a uh, firmware and file system image that you're going to need to download all of this information you can go and find on our blog we've also given, given some uh, reference links to the connected site should you want to get in there um, in this case i've got com uh, port 10 then you can go and uh, get the firmware uh, that you've downloaded followed by the file system okay so I usually just select yes wipe uh, all the data just in case it's not a new module and uh, we will let that complete before moving on to the next step okay so at this point uh, we've let the flash tool do its job we have also disconnected the module from the computer and plugged it back in so that, that it, the, the device can uh, reboot and pick up the new settings and what we should see if we go to our wi-fi settings on the machine that you flashed it from you will have something similar to uh, what we can see here which is a connected wi-fi device so what we're going to be doing is connecting to that um, and then we should be redirected to a web page which uh, will allow you to go and connect to your local SSID so that the module can connect to your local Wi-Fi. Okay, so we're going to be opening our Home Assistant dashboard. Once we're there, we need to navigate to our file editor. You then open your configuration.yaml file. Scroll down right to the bottom so that you don't interfere with any of your configurations uh, that may already be there. So we're going to give it a description so we know what uh, the entry is for. So in this case we're going to be putting the connected uh, alarm system integration then we're going to specify the integration itself so connected in this case and then a colon then there's two additional entries we need to make the first will be for the uh, access token and the access token is, is completely random it's just something that i made up and put in there it doesn't need to be anything specific and then the last item that you need to put in there is your um, the URL host so in this case your URL host is the um, home assistant URL that you use to access your dashboard so we've done that so uh, next steps is to save and then restart Next, what we want to do is navigate our way to the configuration and then integrations. And as you can see, there are two new uh, integrations that is picking up. In my case, it's because I've got two different modules. Uh, that is why you can see the two. So we're going to click on one of them. Um, as you can see, you've got all the details, the IP address, etc., that's been assigned to the device so uh, you can copy that and just keep it in a safe place if you ever need to reference that again then we're going to go submit okay and here's our configuration so we're going to assign it to a area in the house so in my case i'm just going to uh, create a new one we'll call it uh, 
the alarm system <laughs> very original okay and then we need to go and select that so alarm systems been selected we're going to go and finish that and the next item that we'll be dealing with is the zones so all the zones we will be setting as binary sensors I'll only be using the first three zones in this case and then zone 5 I've got as the switchable output so that will be switching the alarm on and off so submit then we'll pick what type of zones they are so my first zone is a perimeter sensor or a motion sensor and I will be giving it a short description or a name the same will go with zone 2 which is also a motion sensor And then the last zone will be a door magnet so we're going to select that as door and then just specify a name as well okay so the last one is our switchable output so we're going to be just giving it a description of alarm arm slash disarm that will keep as high and the last one we need to or the recommendation around that is to set it to a thousand milliseconds the other items we can leave as default and then go submit or finish and then this we will leave as default again leave the last one and then submit now we can hit finish okay so we've got our zones uh, that should now be available for us to go and add to our home assistant dashboard so we're going to go and select the entity as you can see there's our four entities to arm and disarm together with the binary sensors for the uh, perimeters and for the doors as you can see if you hit the alarm it will just briefly go on and off and then we're going to add it to lovelace i'm just going to give it a uh, dashboard to add it to there you go it's been added so uh, let's have a look at what it looks like so uh, that pretty much wraps up the integration um, please have a look at our blog if you need more information uh, I have also supplied a few links uh, if you want to do a bit of reading before you take on the task uh, thank you for watching Check out the links to the options that we've discussed, the options that are already available. Yeah, and um, I'll uh, put a few of the DIY links as well uh, if you want to have a look at that. And if you want what Kitty made, you can check out our website and if you use the promotional code, you get 10% off. Thank you so much for watching and join us next time when we dream up something epic. <laughs>